Hi there everyone and welcome back to another Josh W video. Uh, this time it's not actually on the washing line, we are inside the house in the warm, the weather has deteriorated somewhat. Um, and I thought this would be a good opportunity to have a look at some of the rolling stock uh, that I have on the railway, uh, specifically uh, the scratch built rolling stock. So these two vehicles that you can see here are both completely scratch built with the exception of the the necessary fittings that you can see on there. I talked about this one in my previous video. Uh, we'll, we'll look at them both today just to kind of get a flavour of how, how I've done it and hopefully to inspire you to do similar. So starting with this coach then, this is a fairly simple narrow gauge design, not based on any particular prototype, but if anything, closer to uh, Glen Valley Tramway carriage perhaps. It's not finished, you can see where I need to just add a bit more detail and do a bit more touching up uh, here with perhaps a bit of filler um, and maybe some more detailed parts, some, some brass parts and some vacuum hoses perhaps. But on the whole, it's a fairly robust little carriage. It's nice and heavy, but it does the job and it looks quite nice going around the railway, it's fairly simple. Now, the inspiration behind this is the fact that I wanted a relatively small four-wheeled carriage on the railway that would be capable of uh, effectively being part of a passenger train but also part of a mixed goods train as well so i came up with this idea based on a few photographs of similar ones that i'd seen uh, on garden railway groups and uh, on the, uh, the, the well old photographs of the glen valley tramway the whole thing with the exception of the fittings and the roof, and I think possibly the base, is all made from cardboard. So just your, your standard packaging cardboard. Um, I think actually I may have used part uh, bits of um, uh, artists' mounting board as well. That stuff is excellent. If you can get hold of that, that stuff is absolutely brilliant. If not, just grab some uh, some normal cardboard, some biscuit packet, um, you know, the, the, the cardboard that your biscuits come in. Um, Anything like that you can get hold of is just brilliant uh, for this sort of thing. So let's talk about how I did it then. Starting from the bottom, simple balsa wood base, uh, about nine centimeters wide, but about 17 centimeters long. Again, not based on any drawings, but it works for my railway. Um, a few little thin strips of wood here. Uh, these are Binney Engineering axle guards and wheels. Uh, essentially set 32 millimeters apart, wheels back to back 28 millimeters to give you the, the right gauge. Simple as that. Up here then, uh, I cut out uh, some sides of cardboard. So I cut the whole thing out of cardboard very loosely. Uh, again, with the ends, just one sheet of cardboard, one sheet of cardboard, and the same on the other side. I then uh, went over the whole thing with uh, watered down PVA glue. So maybe one part PVA glue to two parts water, mix it all up and do about three or four coats. And after a while, let's do this. After a while, you're, that's better, look, look at that. That's just cardboard, there's no plastic there as many coats of PVA and water as you could put on and it will turn hard like plastic. And that gives it a bit of extra resilience. I then finished it off with matchsticks. You can see matchsticks along here, along there, just to give it a little bit of detailing, a bit of edging, and just to make it a little bit more robust. Same again on the ends, matchsticks down the side, matchsticks on here. I then fitted some, some simple, again, these are simple Binny Engineering, uh, I'm not sure whether they're 3D printed, but little plastic um, buffers on there. You can pick them up for a few quid for a pack. It's amazingly cheap. And same again on that end. You, you need to weight it down with some, some lead or stones or something like that uh, as well, just to make sure it doesn't derail. But that whole carriage probably cost me no more than about six or seven quid to make. And it took me a week or so. Um, Forgive me, I didn't mention the balsa wood uh, roof 
simple balsa wood roof, just curved, a few elastic bands around there to hold it in place and glued down with PVA glue or uh, slightly stronger glue maybe around there, uh, quite important for the roof. Six or seven quid for the whole lot. I really do recommend going down this route if you're new to Golden Railways or you want to try and make it cheap. Um, it works for me. It's really enjoyable if you've got a bit of time to put it together. Uh, I think it's fantastic. Um, the the kind of the the developing the skills uh, and uh, learning as you go. And and if if you if you like me and you want to try and keep the cost of garden railways as low as possible and keep the enjoyment as high as possible, there is really nothing better than having the satisfaction of making something yourself. Even if it's like this and it's not perfect, it still helps and it's still. Um, a really enjoyable experience. I finished it off with some home roll paint uh, and a couple of coats of varnish so it's good outdoors um, and that's it simple as that. Next up we have the scratch built GWR toad style brake van. I did a very short piece on this uh, in the last video but let's have a little bit more of a look in this. This one features a few more different bits and pieces as well. Exactly the same base as you can see. Um, there's pretty much no difference there as to how I did the last one. A uh, bit of balsa wood floor and balsa wood strips around with the Binny Engineering axle guards glued on. Simple as that. You could make any piece of four wheeled rolling stock using exactly the same uh, measurements and exactly the same process as that. Not, no, no issues there at all. Turning it up on its side then. This was used, I, I used uh, cardboard on this one as well. So it's effectively a cardboard box with sides cut out and the end cut out like so. Um, I then repeated the same process as with the little green uh, cream carriage to uh, put PVA glue right the way around it just to make sure that it's uh, rock hard. Um, unlike the balsa wood roof on here, this is actually a cardboard roof, but you can hear it has the same the same sound when you tap it that is absolutely rock solid i then finished it with uh, lolly sticks these are lolly sticks on the outside and match sticks as well it was a third layer but the second layer was made up by using lolly sticks to give it that nice kind of um wooden planked appeal uh, that a lot of wagons do have same again here i put some filler in there but i'm not very good with filler as you can see it definitely needs um another another coat of filler uh, and smoothing out to make it a little bit more presentable but from a distance it doesn't look too bad and I'm certainly not a perfectionist but it is on the list to sort out. Uh, third layer then was just the matchsticks just to give it that little extra bit of indentation uh, and a bit more detail. Uh, balsa wood strips down here almost as the kind of the, the um, running boards down here that you see on see on brake bands or step boards should we call them. Um, much less wide than on the real thing as a result of my quite restrictive loading gauge. Um, nothing else to it really. Uh, fittings, again Binny Engineering, uh, IP Engineering, Vacuum Hoses, uh, although I do now use uh, Dean Goods, excellent website, um, and they do some really cheap 3D printed little plastic vacuum hoses. These ones are metal, um, cast metal, and they are of excellent quality these are ip engineering this lamp uh, i can't recall the supplier it was on ebay and the chap was selling them for about five quid for two uh, non-working but what i've done is i've um i've drilled through the back of this and put a, a working led in there uh, it i i will, may light that up in a minute just to show you um, and then i went back on ebay and found that actually uh, the same chap actually makes a working version of this for about a pound or two extra. So there you go. If you want a nice working tail lamp, um, you can find that on eBay. There's some really good stuff on there. Uh, and that's it really. It's as simple as that. Um, I think it's a nice robust piece of rolling stock. It looks good with the carriage. It looks good behind a freight train as well. Um, and again, it took me maybe two weeks to do that one. Uh, but it really does go to show. Um, I guess what I'm trying to say with this video is that it's not they're not perfect they're not good models by any standard uh, but they do they do the job for me um, and I really do think that uh, they're an excellent way to keep the cost of modeling low um, and really try and try uh, and you know it's an experience to improve your skills so 
Um, please do have a go. Let me know in the comments how you get on. I'd love to see the photographs that you uh, of the stuff you, you produce. Um, and uh, I really do hope to continue this trend. Um, it works for me. It saves me a lot of money. I should probably have said that that cost me about no more than about £10 to make. Um, and uh, yeah, I really do look forward to um, seeing your results. Okay, thank you very much and we'll see you again soon.